All right, coming up, uh, interesting take. David Letterman, right? And uh, you've got uh, now Tiger Woods, right? One is you're paying off someone legitimately. The other one is blackmail. So what's what's the difference? How does that work? We're going to talk to someone who says blackmail should actually be legal. It's a very weird take, and it's a legal argument, which you may agree with. This is The Bill Handel Show. KFI is on a need-to-know basis. And boy, do you need to know. KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. Welcome back to the Bill Handel Show. Bill Handel here. And uh, thank you for uh, joining us. Now, I'll do another take on the Tiger Woods and incorporate the David Letterman story. Radar Online reported that Tiger was actually negotiating a deal to pay Rachel Yucatel, first mistress, mistress, supposedly, more than a, a million bucks to keep quiet about their affair and not to release hundreds of emails and text messages that they exchanged. Tiger's representative is being either accused of or reported that a, that he offered $200,000 to pay off a witness with a detailed knowledge of the affair with Yucatel. Now, assuming that's true, let's contrast it with the David Letterman story. Remember that? CBS producer Robert Halderman either offered or threatened Letterman with a deal, pay him money, Otherwise, he is writing a script revealing that Letterman slept with female staff members. Well, he was arrested and charged with larceny and was described as being a blackmailer. So in one case, the person staying silent theoretically gets rich because there's been no accusation against you could tell for blackmail. On the other way, the other hand, the person gets indicted and faces serious jail time. One's a bribe, the other's blackmail. And why is there such a huge difference? Maybe it's because who does the approaching? If someone comes to me and says, you have some information and uh, will offer to pay me a chunk of money if I stay silent, that's not blackmail. You're offering me money to shut up. If, on the other hand, I go to you and say, if you don't pay me, I will then reveal the information. And that seems to be a difference. Is that Stefan Canella? Thank you so much for uh, joining us here on the show. Glad to be here, Bill. Uh, a pleasure. Stefan is an attorney and uh, knows a, a little bit about this. Uh, you either have been the victim of or you actually do blackmail people, correct? <laughs> N- neither one, luckily. Oh, okay. Just, just wondering. Senior fellow with the Ludwig von Mises Institute, which is an interesting place, dedicated to libertarian economic social theory. Uh, he also founded and edits the journal Libertarian Papers and uh, practices in Houston, Texas. All right. Uh, and it's Stefan, correct? That's correct. All right. So uh, you heard me describe one as being legal and the other one being criminal. And is that simply the difference between the two? If I approach and say, pay me or I shut up, and pay me to shut up, uh, or someone comes to me and pay me to shut up, it's two different things. Yeah, there's there's sort of two basic differences here, and you've hit on one of them. Um, uh, they're known as paradoxes in the in the in the blackmail law, and uh, legal scholars have for a long time tried to explain why these um, different treatments of two similar things would uh, is justified. And uh, their explanations are all over the map, and they really don't make sense. And the reason they don't make sense is you're right; they shouldn't be treated differently. Um, you could think of it as there's two paradoxes to blackmail. The first one is that Basically, it's all right to leak a, to leak a secret if, as long as it's true, or even to threaten to do it. And it's also legitimate to ask someone for money. But if you do them together, then it's blackmail. So basically, we have two rights to make a wrong, which makes little sense to most people. Um, it's similar to prostitution theory. It's a, prostitution makes it illegal to pay for what you can give away for free, which also makes little sense. But the second paradox is the one you're hitting on, and that's the idea that it matters who institutes the the transaction. So basically, bribery is legal, but blackmail is not. And uh, a good example of this, uh, about 10 years ago, if you remember, um, uh, the alleged uh, daughter of Bill Cosby, Autumn Jackson, 
was uh, convicted of uh, extortion, which is uh, similar to blackmail, uh, for you know threatening to reveal that he had followed her out of wedlock if she, he didn't pay her a lot of money. Yeah, it was like forty million bucks, right? Yeah, something like that. But the, the, the irony is, and a lot of commentators pointed this out at the time. You know, if she had just filed a paternity suit and then settled it in exchange for her silence, that would have been perfectly fine. Right, and paternity suits are sealed anyway, right? That's, they they can be, and that's correct. Right, so it, there was no public document. I mean, she just she was just stupid. Yeah, and so and yeah. of course this happens in, in lawsuits all the time. You know, a lawsuit is filed and then it, it's settled confidentially. Right, but, and a curti you know, courtesy. Sure, courtesy copies. I mean, I've, I've been practicing law for a while, and a lot of uh, lawyers uh, that I know when we start talking, uh, especially our uh, litigation attorneys, will will send over a courtesy copy of uh, the, the complaint before the filing. Exactly, and that's sort of a subtle way of <laughs> letting you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, uh, yeah. this is legal blackmail. Yeah, it's not so subtle. But uh, let's, <laughs> you mentioned uh, blackmail and extortion. Uh, and and you said they're they're similar but not the same. Would you, would you describe the differences? Yeah, the difference is extortion technically, and the reason I said they're similar is that a lot of the state laws uh, in, in 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 the United States, uh, it's hard to find the word blackmail sometimes used. Like in Texas, for example, there's a statute called theft, and theft um, sort of incorporates blackmail and extortion into it, sort of indirectly. So they're both considered to be types of theft because you're getting something of value from someone uh, in a sort of Ill illegitimate way. Extortion basically is when you threaten to harm someone, uh, unless, um, and that includes harming their reputation. Okay, um, but uh, blackmail is basically just threatening to tell the mm -hmm. truth uh, about something that the the so-called victim doesn't want known publicly. Well, yeah, and let me ask you, 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 one of the things that you, uh, you alluded to is that you're uncomfortable, uh, in that the law treats what appears to be the same thing very differently. Yeah, and there's a couple ways to look at this. Number one, um, it, it seems paradoxical again, but, uh, the actual victim of blackmail is in a way worse off if blackmail is made illegal because the person holding this sort of dangerous or this embarrassing secret has no reason not to reveal it in a world where blackmail is not legal. I mean, he, you know, he, he might as well just go gossip about it. At least with blackmail is legal, at least there's a chance that the, uh, the, the, the person who would, uh, who wants to keep the information secret can keep it secret by paying the blackmail, uh, ransom or fee. Um, but the basic problem is that, look, government is dangerous, laws are dangerous. It's, it's dangerous for the government to use force to back up law. So we libertarians believe that force should only be used by the government or the legal system in response to a violation of people's rights or the use of force. I mean, you shouldn't go passing a law if you just think the behavior that you're trying to prohibit is, not, is a bad idea. It needs to be something worse than that. It needs to be basically a threat of force or a yeah. crime committed against the victim. Well, let me let me throw the paradoxes at you uh, okay. in an area of the law that I've been involved with for a long time. Uh, and, and this is the law looks at exactly the same uh, procedure or incident or uh, aspect, completely the same. A baby. When is a baby a human being? Well, for purposes of abortion, not till the third trimester do you have a living being there. Correct. For purposes of reproduction, uh, in terms of declaring paternity, for example, if I want to declare a paternity suit right after the woman's pregnant, I have a right to do that. For purposes of inheritance, the umbilical cord has to be cut and the kid has to breathe before that's a living being. For purposes of murder, uh, no murder in the first or second trimester if you killed a child with a woman. Third trimester, you got murder. That's correct, and I, I think that some of the uh, abortion rights advocates oppose strongly um, federal law or other law that would, uh, like, add an extra offense to, a, say, a murder of a pregnant woman, it, counting the, the death of the a child to be a, a separate harm, um, not because they're against that happening. Obviously, everyone re recognizes that's wrong, but they're afraid to admit that, you know, uh, there's an actual life being extinguished uh, b before birth because that would uh, be contrary to some of their abortion rights theories. Well, it's you know it's fascinating in terms of uh, the way the law looks at all totally differently, uh, and yet it's the same process, uh, and and we've accepted that. I think one reason is um, I'm a big advocate of uh, decentralized legal systems like the common law, as opposed to artificial law made by uh, legislatures in Congress. Because when the when the Congress just sits down and writes up a law on a piece of paper that they decree to be law, there's no guarantee that it will be consistent with other laws previously passed. Uh, whereas in the common law, the judge has to try to reconcile precedent and case law 
and try not to uh, uh, rule in a way that overturns or overrules previous precedent or case law. So it grows more organically and with less inconsistencies. How did Halderman then get nailed uh, if he he said, uh, I want to be paid for a script that I'm not going to write? Well, I don't know if he's been nailed yet. I, I mean, I think, I think he tried to do it in a subtle way. I mean, he, he obviously was aware that he... It was somewhat dangerous to ask for blackmail, um, you know, um, outright. So he just said, "I'm going to write this script if you want to keep it private." Um, but I, mean, I think the reason is blackmail is actually a crime, although it should not be. And uh, he could have been involved in some other activities which were uh, illegitimate. I'm not sure if he broke into the car or did something that was, uh, you know, a legitimate crime. And quite often these things are, are mixed up together. So your position is that blackmail is should be a non-criminal activity but extortion uh, uh, threatening to harm someone should remain criminal extortion should be criminal um uh, assuming that the underlying harm that is counted as a harm is a legitimate crime and in my view it is not completely for example in the case of reputation rights because by the same token that we would say that uh, um, uh, prostitution should not be illegal and blackmail should not be illegal, um, there also should be no uh, uh, libel and slander should not be illegal. You should be able to say what you want, um, uh, and even destroy and even destroy someone's reputation uh, with yeah. a lie. With a, with a lie, for example, if I get off the air and now I literally go on the air and, I'm, and a zillion people are listening and I go, hey. I've got pictures of Stefan on his and his pet sheep. Correct. And let me tell you, and I have some good photos, and I Photoshop your picture on a film that I've just seen. Uh, okay, uh, I shouldn't be nailed for that one? Yeah, well, the theory is that uh, to make defamation and libel and slander illegal, you have to say there's a right to a reputation. But the problem is a reputation is what other people believe about you, and you don't really have a right to what other people believe about you. And so if the, if the, if the listeners want to choose you know, to, uh, to listen to what you're saying and to trust your word, that's their right to believe that about me. And so I don't have a right to them thinking something about me. So, yes, I think defamation law is also problematic. And so that even aspect, even even, tor even tort law, you're talking about even yes. civil tort law. You would not allow a lawsuit for defamation. Absolutely. Defamation. Correct. I think there's uh, uh, I, I'm, an, I'm a patent attorney. I'm also against intellectual property law for similar reasons. There are no intellectual rights in immaterial things like reputations and inventions and things like this. Um, and so the, the problem with extortion is that it's counted as, ex, as extortion if you threaten to harm someone's reputation. Right. So, but otherwise, extortion, as in general, makes sense. As, as it's basically yeah. a type of threat to harm someone. Yeah. Stephen, you ever run for office? I actually did in 2002. I ran for uh, Texas Court of Criminal Appeals on the Libertarian Party ticket. And you got nailed. Uh, I got 74,000 votes, which wasn't near enough. <laughs> <laughs> just, just wondering. I mean, you know, it, 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 if you're, if, if I ever I've heard any legal scholar out of the box, you're right there at the top of the list. Well, Stephan, thanks very much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. The website is stephankinsella.com. Stefan is S T P H A N, last name Kinsella, K I N S E L L A dot com. Did I get that right? That's right. Like Ray Kinsella and Field of Dreams. You got it. Take care. Thanks much. All right. Uh, what a fascinating, uh, I mean, I find that just, I mean, if that's not an interesting way of doing it. All right, when we come back, uh, death penalty. Once again, they refuse, refuse to kill the people, and I'm getting sick of this. It's time we start putting them down. I'll give you that story as soon as we return. This is the Bill Handel Show.